Hello friends and welcome back to The Art Room with Mr. Eck. Today we're going to be working on a project that uses lines, shapes, and colors that makes something pretty fun. I call it Wacky Animal Portrait. So uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to have uh, four different uh, pictures of animals. I've got a cow, a horse, a pig, and a goat. And we're going to try to draw their faces and then we're going to uh, uh, we're going to look at the picture and then try to draw uh, the face from the picture. Then we're going to color them with some light colors, like uh, like crayons. And then we're going to go over them. We're going to decorate with some fun pattern, line patterns, and that kind of thing on top of the colors. And it's going to be wacky. I don't know how wacky it is, but it's going to be really fun. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is talk about how we can find shapes in any picture and that helps us to draw whatever that picture is. It makes things a little bit easier. Because you may think, man, Mr. Eck, I can't draw a horse, but I'll bet you can draw an oval. So let's check this out. The face is an oval with a small oval at the bottom. I mean, you're going to connect them, but that's pretty much the shape of the, the horse's head is an oval in a circle and then two more ovals for the ears and then just a line that goes off the side and the bottom for his face or for his body and that's it and then of course a line for the horizon line and that's about it so if I were drawing this that's the way I would do it I would start with an oval and then circle and then connect them two ovals for the ears the lines for the body and then you've already got to start you can go ahead and you know, put that diamond there and maybe some circles for the eyes and if I were sketching then that's a great start so let's try it with an actual uh, sketch and a different animal so I'm going to be showing in class uh, my students uh, pictures of some different animal faces like I mentioned and I just want to break down how I would um, draw a couple of, the, of those faces with basic shapes for instance the goat kind of has an upside down triangle face kind of like a pizza mmm goat pizza <laughs> and then it's got some shapes like this for the horns got some kind of ovals for the ears that go off to the side its nose is just like some lines like that with a little smile like that with some circles for the eyes and then its back goes off this way and its chest goes off this way and then you have a goat Let's look at the cow. Cow is kind of similar to the horse, except its face is a little bit more blocky. It's not so much a an oval as it is like a rounded rectangle, and then it's got like a nose kind of at the bottom in the middle. And it's got some big oval ears on the side. And then the bottom of like his chest, neck area goes this way, and the back goes this way. You got two circles for the eyes. So you do some circles for the nose. That's pretty much it. And then you just kind of connect all the shapes. I will have the pictures up where my students can see it and try to copy it as well as they can. Shut that nose a little bit. He's got like a white chest. I think that would be very cow-like of him. And that's pretty much it as far as the drawing goes. Then we're going to color it with some light colors. You can use any colors you want. It does not have to be uh, lifelike. And I'm going to put a horizon line here. That way I've got some area for some the ground and the sky. And I'm just going to color the whole thing solidly. And then we're going to outline it and add some fun uh, details with uh, line patterns and that kind of thing. So first off, I'm going to color it. Next we're going to do the patterns I told you about. So we're, 
This is where it gets kind of wacky. I mean, the colors is one thing, because I've never seen a pink cow, but I just wanted to see a pink cow, so that's why I made a pink cow. So I did kind of light colors to color our uh, colored in. Now we're going to go on top of it with some different kind of line patterns and swirls and that kind of thing. So I'm going to do some swirls in the sky with a darker blue, because I think that will go nicely with my teal. And the reason we want the background to be light and the details to be dark is so it shows up like that. So I think this will be nice and look like some, uh, some like it'll represent the wind. Is that kind of what I'm thinking? Put some swirls in there. You can do whatever kind of pattern you want to in your sky. This is just an example. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. And I'm going to get a green. And I'm going to do some different patterns in the grass. Dark green, I think. There we go. Let's see. I think I'll do some zigzags. That way, it kind of represents grass. Doesn't look a lot like grass, but it can represent grass. Ooh, I like that a lot. Alright, and now for my cow. I think I want to do... Find the right color. Yeah, I think red violet's perfect. I think I'm going to do polka dots for my cow. Now the finishing touch is going to be some black outlines on my cow. So for this uh, you can either use a black marker, a black sharpie if you have that, or even a black crayon if you have a nice sharp one. I'm going to be using Sharpie. I think that'll work all right with this crayon. So I'm going to go ahead and outline all the lines on my cow with Sharpie. Sometimes the Sharpies don't work that great where there's crayon. So I might regret this and end up going back over it with a black crayon, but we'll see how it goes. It's looking all right. That's the big shiny eyes. I'm just doing the outlines. I don't want to do any coloring in with black or anything like that, because the, the colors are just fine as they are. There, I think that's really fun. That's a fun, wacky animal portrait, and I like it a lot. Well, here is my finished wacky animal portrait. I think it turned out pretty fun. I like it quite a lot. Um, I Yeah, okay, you're probably thinking, Mr. Eck, that's pretty small. Well, I have to work small so it fits under my camera. But you guys, at least in my class, will be working with a much bigger paper. So remember to draw large, okay? We want to fill up the space with our main subject, which in this case is our wacky animals. Well, I hope you have fun with your wacky animals, and I'll see you next time in the art room.